Britain is heaving with hoarders. I haven't been in this wardrobe for probably about four years. I'm utterly frustrated. I could never find anything. Whose collections are out of control. Never been worn. Never been worn. Their clutter is crashing in all around them. But help is at hand. A bungalow with enough stuff in it for a mansion. Collectibles expert Curtis Dowling will work out what is worth cashing in. 45 quid? Yeah, 45 quid. So I'll shake hands with you shake on 35 quid. Shake hands on 35. While Queens of Clean, Joanna Riley and Marianne Kamak will sort out what to keep and what to chuck. Well, they've got a bit of giving them. Yeah, but not enough. What we need to do is divide them up into themes. Rooms will be seen like never before. Brilliant. No one said it would be easy. You're not getting anywhere far, no, are you? No, it's a bit of a nightmare. So can our hoarders face the old heave-ho? Why isn't he on your mantelpiece? This is the thing. And reclaim their homes for good. Just need to be put in here and organised. I know, I know. Today, they're in South Wales to help Adam, whose family cast-offs have made his home almost uninhabitable. At the moment, you can't even swing a cat in here, to be honest. And we'll be in Nottinghamshire with self-proclaimed hoarder, Madge. I'm a potterholic when it comes to collecting. Who needs some serious help to make her home clutter-free. Well, you don't use all this stuff. Two hands make, make lighter work. work. Forty-four-year-old industrial chemist Adam lives in his three-bedroom terraced house in South Wales. Usually, three bedrooms would be more than enough for a single man, but not in Adam's case. My biggest problem is I hate the word no. No! People are quite happy to, to pass things on that they don't want, and I've just collected more and more and more. And as his hoard has grown, Adam's fallen out of love with his home. I'm never here. I go out and play hockey four times a week. It's just somewhere to sleep, to be honest. Adam has plenty of pals, but never brings them back to his jam-packed pad, as two of his bedrooms and dining room are overflowing. I'd love to have it as a place where I could entertain. Why am I doing this to myself? So the man who just can't say no has just said yes to a visit from our two experts to help decide what to cash in, what to keep, and what to clear out. Curtis has worked in the antiques industry for 25 years and is here to sniff out unused items he could sell for Adam. Hi, please meet you, sir. And Joanna, who owns a cleaning business, will help Adam sort the rest of his hoard. Well, here it is. Well, that's a lot of clutter, isn't it? Yes, quite a bit, yeah. This is a spare bedroom, apparently. And a signed picture of the Baron Knights. No, that's actually the Grumbleweeds. <laughs> that internationally famous comedy group, of course. <laughs> from the 70s. From the 70s I'm and 80s. I'm far too young. How can you not know that's from the 70s? Look, look at that man. It's like you with a wig on. <laughs> you can't get away with that look anymore. <laughs> Looks like a comedy Bee Gee, doesn't he? <laughs> But despite the old-fashioned outfits, Curtis reckons he's found his first item to sell, as there's a market for signed snaps like this. Yes, there's certainly a lot of stuff in here. Anything exciting in here? Yeah, there's some silver um, spoons, there's some coins, there's all sorts of things in here. And it's not just in here that there's plenty of stuff to sell. Well, there's a gramophone downstairs. Do you want to come down and have a look at it? Yeah, yeah, I do. Let's go. Okay. I'll leave you to it. Great stuff. Yeah. See you later. Bye. <laughs> I'm a little overwhelmed, really. Adam has an unbelievable amount of stuff. This is going to be a massive challenge. It's dusty in here as well. I could do it. Spring clean. Slight understatement. What is that? Well, it's not a bird. It's not a plane. It's what Adam protects his man bits with when he plays hockey, so I think he'll need to hang on to that. Downstairs, the dining room is also starving for space. Oh, what well, you'd expect to find on anyone's dining room table, I suppose. Yeah, who doesn't sit down to dinner with a straw hat and hedge trimmer? That's all served with a nice bottle of rosé. Perfect. And all overlooked by a rather unusual piece of art. What's going on with that painting, then? The eyes are slightly out of perspective, aren't yeah. they? 
Poor thing looks a bit mangy too. That's a family piece. Uh, my great grandmother painted it. Oops. I couldn't bear to be parted with it. If you told me it was worth more than the house, I'd have to get rid of it, but no. Um, I won't be telling you that. <laughs> no. While Joanna carries on trying to work out what to keep and what to chuck, Curtis has found something Adam will part with, a lovely old gramophone he inherited from his granny. This was probably one of the most important pieces in somebody's house in the 1920s. Yes. People will pay the right price for something in good condition. Hmm. And at the moment, it's a bit tired. So this, we've got to make it look great. There's a job for you. <laughs> I'm surprised Adam wants to get rid of this gramophone, but the good news is he's letting it go. Once cleaned up, I think this could make a couple of hundred pounds, but my concern is he wants a little bit more than that. Upstairs, Joanna's already found a few things to give the boot. I've got a foot massage here. Yeah. And this is... A whirlpool bath. Have you ever used either of them? No, I haven't, to be honest. They were given to me by my mother. I think they came out of the attic at her place, to be honest. OK. Perhaps they should have stayed there. Adam doesn't seem like a foot spa kind of guy. There are more barely used items in the next room, but at least these might be sellable. Spoons. Spoons. I think that's really sweet. I've also got some coins. There's some cameras in here. I think they're a few pounds. Yeah. There's some jewellery back here. I've, I've always assumed it's all costume jewellery. Nice little 30s piece there. A lot of the bits and pieces Adam's been given is from his family, so he has invested a lot of himself into what could be the financial value. So he doesn't want to see them go for nothing, and that's understandable, who would? But I'm not sure if they're going to make big money, but time will tell. Back in the sitting room, Curtis has spotted a couple of controversial items Adam's inherited. Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler. I know these are strange books to have. They were given to oh. my grandmother. Um, as she says in the letter, she was in Germany shortly before the war began. And they were given to her by a young soldier that she happened to know at the time. You'll be pleased to hear that something like this would sell to a collector of war memorabilia. Yeah. This one's 1938. Mm. The most expensive one sold for something like 30,000. It was signed. Yeah. And it was a first edition. I'm guessing that these would probably make between 80 and 120 pounds. Adam wants to make sure the books don't end up in the wrong hands. So it's up to Curtis to find the right buyer. So, after a busy morning rummaging through Adam's hoard, Curtis has already unearthed plenty of gems he hopes to coin in some cash for. People will pay the right price for something in good condition. And now he's ready to make some money. So you're leaving me? Yeah, I've got things to take away to start selling. So I guess you've got a busy job now. A really busy job. Good luck. Joanna's staying put as she still has tons of piled-up possessions to sort and help Adam decide what to keep and clear out. Curtis has headed to a vintage clothing store. He thinks the owner may be a potential buyer for Adam's box of costume jewellery. Polly, good afternoon. Good afternoon. But Polly's no pushover. Bit of Paris crystal? Yes. A few stones missing. Yeah. Coming on 100 years old. This is true. I think we forget, don't we? Mm. Polly's angling for a bargain. In all honesty, I, I would probably say 30 quid for the lot. Do you want to go a little bit higher and make, make my day? 35? I'm delighted. <laughs> You're easily delighted. No, I am. <laughs> you better show us the money, then. 40 pounds. Um, do you have any change? I've got no change. <laughs> so shall we call it 40 pounds? Oh, go on, then. I'm Marvelous. happy with Look my lot. I've won. Well, maybe you've won, actually. Maybe I have. 40 quid. Thanks very much. Job done. Ha-ha. Chivalry is alive and well. It's just that someone needs to remind Curtis. That cheeky extra fiver kickstarts Adam's stash of cash with 40 quid. But Curtis still has plenty more items to sell. 
And it's not just Adam who sent out a hoarder SOS to our experts. Meet Madge, professional potter and self-proclaimed hoarder. Her home in Nottinghamshire is bursting at the seams. I'm a potterholic when it comes to collecting pottery pieces. <laughs> but Madge's hoarding goes well beyond pottery. I am a creative clutterer. Creative clutterer? That's a new one. I'm an artist. We just see things differently. When Madge downsized from a large eight-bedroomed house to a modest three-bed 15 years ago, she took everything with her and has kept squeezing it in ever since. Things are everywhere. I just need this space. We hear you, Madge. The hoarding began 40 years ago when she came to the UK from Jamaica, and it hasn't been helped by folk offering her potter's equipment. Now I have had enough. I'm fighting back. Maggie's bedroom is swamped with clothes, and the back bedroom is packed with her passion, pots. But Curtis is here to make Madge some cash from her clutter, and one item he spots is not a pot. So let's talk about this then. Yes, this tall boy is too tall, he's too big. Madge, it's also broken. I was hoovering, believe it or not. I do clean occasionally. <laughs> I lift the, ho the, the hoover bit to go around somewhere else, and it, it crashed onto the door and broke the glass. Oh Despite Madge's powers of destruction, Curtis reckons that cabinet could be worth something. So it's Victorian, about 1850, 60, 70. It's good enough quality for it still to be a piece that makes OK money. Right. Any idea what you want for it? A thousand pounds. Wowza! With the glass fixed, it's going to be hundreds of pounds. Mm -hmm. So if you're happy, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Good. Yes. So with Madge happy with the valuation, that's the first item to sell and will give Madge a bit more space. But there are plenty of other items to flog, so best keep Madge away from the vacuum. There's just so much of it. Still to come, Joanna's met her match in Madge. I'm sure she's lost count of how many pots she's got in this room. And Adam's finding it harder to clear his clutter than expected. Can't send him to the skip, can you? In South Wales, Yes Man Adam is finally saying no to clutter to be able to have guests over to his home. I'm 40 plus years old and I think I need to grow up. And in Nottinghamshire, cash for clutter connoisseur Curtis is helping hoarder Madge identify items she could sell. But she's setting the bar high. Any idea what you want for it? A thousand pounds. And it's not just a cabinet Madge is willing to sell. In her overrun carport com studio, Supercellar Curtis has spotted some money-making potential. Four surplus wheels and a pugging machine. That's a clay blender to you and me. Somebody said, Madge, I've got a, a, a pugging machine. Come and have it. Now, I know a lady that I'm going to go and call mm -hmm. who's opening up a pottery school. Oh, wow. Uh, any idea what you want for them? Yeah, 500 pounds for everything. OK, well, let's keep our fingers crossed pounds. that we can get that for you. Fingers and toes. Inside, Curtis has managed to find somewhere to sit to make that all-important call. Oh, hello there. Is that Christine? It's Curtis Dowling here. Oh, hello. Excellent. So you might be interested. She is interested and is coming over later. That's good news. There could be a few hundred pounds there straight away. While Curtis and Madge carry on hunting for cash for clutter, over at Adam's home in South Wales, upstairs in the small bedroom, Joanna's uncovering more evidence that his own family feed his hoarding habit. So you like collecting to goodly toys? <laughs> no, I just seem to pick them up from my sister. Um, I went over to her house one day and uh, she said, I've got all these cuddly toys and they're just going out, so I kind of pick them up. You can't send him to the skip, can you? Oh, yes, you can. Adam's got himself in this mess by being too soft to say nay to his family's cast-offs. Grandmother was terrible for just giving me things. Every time we went round there, she'd say, oh, just take this, just take that. 
and you feel terrible turning her down. <laughs> but I'm sure your family wouldn't be offended if you no. said no more cuddly teddies, no more bags, yeah, maybe give could, them to charity. Yeah. yeah. There's just so many things that I suppose, if I'm honest, I wouldn't want to spend too much time in this room. Yeah. Do you think that's why you play hockey so many times and you work long hours? It could well be, yeah. Adam's a really sweet, lovely guy. He's stuck in a rut. There's just too much for him to do. So it's just a case of me working with Adam to give him a helping hand. And hopefully, once I've gone, he can carry on the work. Adam's eclectic collection's been expanding for a decade, but it was six years ago that his hoarding spiralled out of control. The truth of the matter is my father used to come over and visit me the most and he'd push me to keep on top of things. But now he's passed, uh, there's no one there that, that keeps me in check properly. But now that Adam's unable to entertain in his home, he's come to a potentially life-changing realisation. I've just got to the stage where I've sat down and thought, I need to get this house into a shape where I can be proud of it. I'm 40 plus years old and I think I need to grow up. And Joanna's delighted to help Adam. I used to have parties here, to be honest, going back four or five years. I'd love to be able to have people stay here. I mean, my intention was to have the put-me-down bed in here. Is, is there a put-me-down bed in here? Yeah, buried somewhere underneath these boxes. OK. Certainly since my father's died, I've just gone a bit over the top. What do you think he'd say now if he came and had a look at your rooms? Certainly he'd give me a kick up the backside, I know that. <laughs> How do you feel about finally getting going? Really looking forward to it. I want to get on and get this all clear and sure. have a nice empty house, hopefully. Time to start boxing up items Adam doesn't need to send to charity. And he soon gets the hang of how ruthless he needs to be. So Joanna thinks he's ready to go solo. I dare say it might be difficult, but Joanna really invigorated me to get this, the place cleared up. It's nice to have somebody to, to give you that push. Joanna's not had an easy job helping Adam decide what to keep and what to clear. But there are still a number of items that his heart is set on hanging on to. Couldn't bear to be parted with it. But eventually Joanna did convince him to clear out a massive amount of unloved items. No more cuddly teddies, no more bags. Adam now has both bedrooms and that diner to carry on gutting without her. Back in Nottinghamshire with Madge, she's called time on something else that Curtis could sell. Right, this clock, OK? How long you had it? I have had it over 40 years. I think we paid about £300. So, long case clocks have been around since about 1680, 1690. Wow. This one is relatively modern. So, the best place for this is an auction. I imagine something like this is going to sell for, on a bad day, mm -hmm. maybe about £80. Pounds. £80? Pounds. On a bad day. Right. Ah! On a good day, it might go up to one thirty, forty, fifty. Wow, yes. Ooh, she doesn't look happy. Like everybody in this situation, her perception of how much something's worth is not the reality of what it's really worth. But we will try and get her the best price. One, because we want to help her as much as we can. But secondly, these things on a good day could surprise us all. Madge also has a second long case clock she'll happily send to auction. To keep clocks intact, get an expert in to pack them up and move them out to ensure all the delicate workings are kept safe. Madge's dream is to make her back bedroom an organised gallery. And here to help is cleaner Joanna. I'm sure she's lost count of how many pots she's got in this room. Pottery that takes so much time to make and it's just pretty much left, not covered. In fact, I'll start the work for you in this room. But Madge is a real headstrong lady. I'm going to have to tread really carefully to help her get those things sorted. Despite the mess, Madge is talented and was, in fact, the first woman to graduate in ceramics from the Jamaica School of Art and Craft. 
and she's passionate about the pieces she makes. I have loved and I've cared for them and you look at them and you feel a sort of warmth. If you carry on too much with that, you don't sell anything, you just keep them all. But Joanna's first job is to tackle those piles of clothes in the bedroom. I'm keeping an eye on you though, because uh, uh, there's some of them I like to keep. Okay. Right. And I think you and I have the same <gasps> taste. Oh, wow, you can't have that. Why? That is my favourite dress. That one you can't have. I knew you were going to say I that. <laughs> to make this easier, yeah. what clothes have you not worn in the past six months? Finally, Joanna's persistence pays off. Some trousers? That can go, yes. That one can go to charity. That one can be worn a little longer. All right, all right. Charity. Way to go, Madge. Come to think of it, a long way to go. Are you going to get your hands in and help me? You want me to help you? Yes. All right. Stand there you and look pretty. You didn't say. Two hands make lighter work. work. Yes, right. Maggie's huge collection of clothes is a common problem. We only wear 20% of our wardrobe 80% of the time. I thought the process would have been more horrific. OK. I thought you were going to boss me around and throw it out and put it on and run and run. But it's very relaxing. Is it nice having someone to do it with as well? Does oh, it make it that easier? that helps. That helps. You're caring where my clothes and me are concerned, which is nice. Thank you. Aww. Good girl. <laughs> I'll pay you later, Mag. Curtis has finished his look around and has a bundle of items he thinks he can sell for a decent sum. It's going to be hundreds of pounds. Mm -hmm. How have you got on today? I've had a cracker of a day today. What have you got left to do? I've got to go back upstairs with Madge. Mm -hmm. She's got a, a little room full of bowls and pots. A lot of the pots have already got price tags on, so that oh. tells me that she's ready to let go of those. Brilliant. She's just an incredible woman. I yes. might try and have a quick go at her potter's wheel before I leave. Let's Good go luck with that, Patrick. <laughs> Swayze? So that would make Madge Demi Moore. You no, know, I can feel what oh, you're take doing. Take your hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, you, you can see where this it's is not going. That. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Think that's quite enough of that. Yeah, Joanna, those rooms won't clean themselves, and Curtis, you've got some selling to do. Local auctioneers didn't think they could sell Maggie's broken display cabinet for her hefty reserve of £300. So Curtis is visiting furniture dealer Jim. What do you think? Well, as you, as you know, the dark brown furniture market isn't what it used to be. Sadly um, not. But this needs a lot of work doing to it. Yeah, it does. Apart from not being the height of fashion, I wouldn't want to give more than £150 for it. In the past, I might have been embarrassed to say that sort of figure. Trouble is, she wants £300 for it. Yeah. It should be worth it, but not to me. Not a great start. It's a no-sale. Curtis will need to persuade Madge to lower that reserve price or it'll be heading home to her. I hope he has more luck shifting her other items. Still to come, Curtis attempts to sell some of Madge's prized pottery pieces, but gets off to a rocky start. This one doesn't work for me. And Adam gets stuck into scrubbing up unwanted items ready for sale. It's harder than it looks, this, isn't it? In Nottinghamshire, our collectibles expert Curtis and cleaning guru Joanna are trying to help Potter Madge throw out and cash in. You can't have that. Why? That is my favourite dress. And in South Wales, they're determined to empty Adam's home of his family cast-offs. I'd love to be able to have people stay here. Since my father's died, I've just gone a bit over the top. To help Adam out, Curtis is heading to a little shop specialising in war memorabilia. He's hoping owner Andrew might be interested in Adam's copies of the controversial Mein Kampf. Andrew, good morning. Good morning, Curtis. How are you? Very well. Nice to see you. Curtis shows Andrew Adam's granny's letter explaining the provenance of the two books. 
they're quite nice because they're early. Um, the dedication in this one is particularly nice, and it's even better that you have the, the letter to kind of back up yeah. the set that you have there. I'd like to keep them uh, because I'm, in fact, Jewish myself. My family were very lucky. They were extremely lucky, I think. Uh, the one side of my grandfather's uh, family had connections in England, and they, they could be taken out quickly. Mm. They did have family who were lost, and I think things like this, it always kind of grounds me back to the roots mm. that sometimes in this day and age do get forgotten. Andrew might have a personal interest in the books, but what is he willing to pay? I would be happy to go for around about the 100 mark. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's too low. I think 140 okay. for them is not an unfair price to pay. I'll go 130. Do 130 for me. 130, I think, is fair for both of us. OK, deal. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. That's £10 more than Curtis estimated, making Adam's current total £170. Over at Adam's, with a ton of clutter still to clear, his mum, Rena, is lending a hand. Oops. And dishing out some no-nonsense advice. Now, how did you manage to accumulate all this rubbish without my knowing as well? What, what do you mean without your knowing? A lot of it you ca came by from you. Oh, that's his mum told. But Rena's not going to take that lying down. Look at these old computers and yeah. everything. You've got so many. Why don't you just chuck them? Mm. Can't argue with that, Adam. But Harmony is soon restored in the second bedroom after finding some of Adam's father's old car and motorbike manuals. The Triumph Mayflower was... Um, we had that car when we got married. And there's motorcycle stuff, isn't there? Oh, yes, because that was a lot of your dad's. When I was pregnant with you, your dad took me on the bike to try and jog you out of me. That's one way to try and bring on labour. Not sure his dad would approve of this bike, though. <sighs> That's enough of that. <laughs> yes, easy does it, as there's a mountain of clearing to do and the dining room's barely been touched. Back at Potterholic Madge's in Nottinghamshire, Joanna's very presence is buoying up Madge's desire for change in the back bedroom. I need a room emptied of things. I would like shelves up so I can display my pots. At the moment, they're just wrapped up and covered up and can't be seen. In order for you to get room for your new pots, yes. you've got to get rid of some of the old ones. Yes. You know what, Madge? I thought that this would be more difficult because mm -hmm. I know how passionate you are about your pottery. I am. But I know now that you're ready to get your new work on the walls. Oh, definitely, yes. Madge now has some tricky decisions on what to keep or clear out. I already wrapped that one for Did you, that? really. All right, <laughs> thank you very much. And there's another. Thank you. And this one? Yeah. Uh -huh. that one... You've been very busy, haven't you? This is for you. Really? Yes, when you go home to have a glass of wine. Oh, but don't let it interrupt the clearing up. Over in South Wales, heeding Curtis's advice, Adam's giving his 1920s gramophone a thorough polish before it's sent to auction. Wax on. Wax off. That's it. It's harder than it looks, isn't it? Beeswax only costs a fiver, and spending just a few hours applying one coat can make a massive difference to saleability. Curtis said that if it worked, it would be worth more money, potentially. Adam, there's no time to get down to 1920s ragtime. As that gramophone needs to be auctioned off. But because it's a piece from Adam's childhood, and now looking swish and in working order, Adam slapped on a reserve of 250 quid. Adam's gramophone is a really interesting little lot. It should do pretty well here today. And gramophones are always collectible. Don't forget, records are coming back into fashion. Curtis reckoned all this would fetch was 200 quid. Here's hoping the auction proves him wrong. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to work with lot 11.45. Uh, a little bit of interest, must start the bidding at £100. £100 is bid. Certainly isn't. 120, 130, 140 is bid. At least at it's £140, off. where's 150, 150, 160 now is bid. At £160, oh, good, where's 170, okay. 170? There's not much action in the room, but the online bids are cranking the price up. At £180. Pounds. Last chance then, please. Uh-oh. At £180. Hammer's going down. No sale, as the bid was £70 less than Adam wants, so it's on its way back to South Wales. Always have realistic expectations for an item you're trying to shift. Consider lowering your reserve and trying it again at another auction. Back at Adam's, Mum Rena's now delicately boxing up the clean glasses in the diner to sell them on. Which is just as well, because Adam's approach is more bull in a china shop. But at least he's making progress. And with so much still to do, why not call in the professionals? For a fee, auction houses will sift through your unwanted items for you and help decide what can be sold, given to charity or binned. What I really was interested in were these old um, motor vehicle and motorcycle service manuals. The right person would pay um, a fair amount of money for this. This is a really rare find. But remember, auctioneers will also take commission for sales, a percentage of what you make. So factor that in before you book your trip to the Bahamas. Adam's clear out is gaining momentum. One pro? Yeah. Sure you want to get rid of this? Yeah, I think it's seen better days. It's about time somebody got some use out of it. He's already filled an impressive 20 bags and boxes with stuff he's happy to let go of. And it's paying off. There are beds in the two bedrooms. Okay, that's the last bit. Thanks. Last chip. Great. So Adam waves goodbye to his horrendous hoard that's been holding him back for years. Passionate potter Madge has boxes and boxes of pots she's willing to sell. And eager to make her some moolah, Curtis is now taking two of her very different handmade pieces to a specialist ceramic dealer, Tara, who he really hopes will buy them. Tara. Hi. But things don't get off to a great start. One's useful, one is just art, to be honest. Um, it's certainly not the sort of thing I would generally buy. This one doesn't work for me. That must be Curtis's crestfallen face. However... I like this one. Yeah, love the colour. Oh, time to talk money then. I think I'd be doing her a disservice to get less than £60 for it. OK. Looking more at the 40 to be honest. Do you want to meet me in the middle of 50? Yeah, I, I, can do, I can do 50 on that. Looks like Curtis is returning one piece to match. But Tara's partner, Simon, has been watching on with interest. I can't believe you left that one. Really? I would have picked that one over the bowl. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because? That, to me, is a far more unique piece. So maybe we could do a deal on both. I think so, yeah. Oh, if yeah. that's what you want, yeah. I'll let you run on what you think you want to pay for it probably be happy to pay about £80 for that. I will shake your hand then on both of those for 130 Thank you very much. Thank I'm you. very, very right. pleased with that. Thank you. Thanks to Tara and Simon's differing tastes, Curtis can now put £130 in Maggie's pot. Back in South Wales, it's time to see if Adam's actually given his whole hoard the heave-ho. Took us a lot of time, a bit of energy, but I think it's been worthwhile. Adam's just adding a few finishing touches before Curtis arrives to see what's been done and present Adam with the dosh he's raised from selling his stuff. Adam. Hi, Curtis, how are you? I'm back. Nice yeah, to see nice you. Nice to see you. Do you want to come in and have a look around? I am dying to. Nice. Five weeks ago, Adam was swamped by his clutter. In the small spare room, there was so much stuff covering the floor and the bed, it was impossible for guests to stay over. But now, all the junk's been jettisoned.
Aha! There was a bed lurking in there after all, and floor space. I don't know whether you remember this room, but... Uh, I do. Wow! It's completely different. No wonder. Adam's also totally redecorated, turning the room from utterly uninviting to far more welcoming. Does it feel like a different place? It feels like a different place. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've come home, I've opened the door and think I've come to the wrong place sometimes. <laughs> Oh, and it feels like a bedroom. Well, yeah, it is a bedroom now, isn't it? There's room to swing a cat in there. There is so much space. It's room for guests. Room for guests. Instead yeah. of just stuff. It's a similar story in the larger spare room. Before, it was brimming with bits and pieces Adam didn't need. Now, thanks to a few weeks' work, giving it a lick of paint, new carpet and complete clear-out, after six years, Adam can have people to stay. I am actually quite blown away by the effort you've put in. You've just gone above and beyond the call of duty. I'm pleased you think that. No, I really do. Downstairs in the diner, Adam couldn't even contemplate a dinner party. But now he's cleared the whole space and redecorated here too, turning it from dark and dingy to light and bright. Adam's cleared out over 40 bags and boxes of clutter. And Miner's selling fees has made some great money from dozens of his unused possessions, which means there's icing on the cake. Well, best to tell you what I've got for you. Um, combined, we've managed to get £507 for you. Oh, that's excellent. That's great. That's really not pleased. bad, yeah, actually. I'm really pleased with that. Adam's home not only looks amazing, he's got a fantastic cash for clutter total. Where's £507 going? Well, originally I was going to do it on the carpets, but I've already done them, so I think it's going to go to the fund to do up the bathroom and doing the next steps. There really is no stopping you. That money, actually, then, has recycled itself into making the house even better than it looks already. Well, I hope so, yeah. At the end of the day, I hope it's going to be a lot better. Well done. What a transformation. He's done an amazing job. And, to top it all, he's £507 better off for things he didn't even know he really had. I'm delighted, and I know Adam is. Time to skedaddle. There's a long overdue family gathering starting. I'm really glad I took the plunge. It's been a lot of work, but at the end of the day, I've enjoyed it. It's gonna be a nice living here, I think, now. Cheers to the new house. Still to come, Madge continues her colossal clear out. And when Joanna returns to see what progress has been made, she has a shocking revelation. You are lying. No, I'm not. What? In Nottinghamshire, pottery addict Madge's hoarding habits have hijacked her home. Things are everywhere. Things are stacking over each other. I just need this space. Professional cleaner Joanna is helping Madge get even closer to her dream of an uncluttered gallery room. The back one goes in the box. Brilliant job. We've done very well. Really well. Yeah. Already, Joanna's convinced Madge to fill dozens of boxes with pots to sell. How do you think you're going to manage when I've gone? With difficulty, but I, I've got a lot of friends around. Yes. I'm hoping that they'll come and help me. I'm sure they will. finish off and unclutter and put the shelves and things up. I'm hoping that by getting a friend along to help Madge clear out, it will be more fun for her. But whoever they are, they'll need to understand that when it comes to making the decision, Madge is the boss. Let's hope that pal has the powers of persuasion that Joanna does. There may be some possessions that Madge won't let go of. That is my favourite dress. But Joanna has encouraged Madge to ship out sackloads of items she no longer needs. All right, all right. Charity. Joanna can now leave Madge to it, but time will tell how she'll get on without her. Back with selling whiz Curtis, it's auction time for Madge's clocks. So we've got Madge's two long case clocks. They're not very fashionable anymore, but these sort of things do sell quite well. So I've got high hopes for these today. 
Curtis reckoned Madge could get a maximum of £250 for both. Fingers crossed. Two clocks we're selling for £100. Pounds. 100 is bid, 100, 110, 120. Bids are flying pounds. in. Any advances okay. at 120, 130 anywhere. £120 is bid. Are you all done? You're all finished at £120. Pounds. 130, 140 against you, sir, at £140. Pounds. Are you all done? Mm -hmm. Are you all okay. finished at £140? Pounds? Last chance then, please, at 140 Pounds. Low, but not too bad. That's the two clocks going, going, gone from Madge's home and another 140 quid raised before commission and fees, making Madge's current total £270. Back at Madge's in Nottinghamshire, her clear out with Joanna is well underway. There you go. Into the red back. Ah, oh, too many, too many. Decluttering is not easy. But pal Sally is here. Hi, Sally. With so many pots still to sort, she'll help Madge finish boxing up ones to send off for sale. You know what I call these? My calypso movement. Look at that. Ooh, here you are. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't do that because I must know if it's a set. Are you shouting at me? No, I'm not. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, hold on, hold on, quick. <laughs> oh, I had no idea I had so many pots. They're everywhere. It's been a monumental effort from the two pals, having packed nearly 40 boxes. And talking about monumental, it's time to carry on tackling clothes, Mountain. Okay, man. there you are. That one can go. Definitely charity. Yes. Right. Madge is on a roll, having bagged up over 40 items. It will be interesting to see when it's all been taken away and to start all over again. Oh, no, you know. You I know. am. No. <laughs> <laughs> Madge heads outside to road test her pottery equipment. She's getting it ready for a potential sale with Christine, the pottery teacher Curtis cleverly tracked down. This is an electric wheel, yep. but this one is a foot operated. I quite like this because I could have this anywhere in my studio. It doesn't have to be where the electric sockets are. She's keen, but what about that pugging machine? When did you last switch this on? Because this is electric. I'm very sorry. I tried it just on and it went on and out. You mean it went bang? Yeah. No, it didn't go bang. It just stopped. I'll take this. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll see if I can make it work. OK. Deal. 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 I say. <laughs> Wonderful. Brilliant. Hopefully, Christine can fix the pugging machine. But Madge is delighted, and she's definitely buying all four wheels for £400. For the next few weeks, Madge continues to beaver away, sorting her hoard. It has been very tiring because I didn't know what to expect. Over a month after her first visit, Joanna is back to see how she's done. Hi, Madge, I'm here. Madge was once living in mayhem. Her bedroom was overflowing with piles and piles of unworn clothes. There was barely any room to move, let alone sleep. But now, A mammoth amount of her wardrobe has been cleared out and the room is unrecognisably spacious. Oh, Madge! Oh, yeah? Well done! Look at this! Look at, look, look at this! Look at this bed! I didn't even know you had a bed last I time know. I visited. I, I didn't know I had one myself. <laughs> Tell me, what's it like to have your bedroom back? Absolutely wonderful. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Madge, but whatever happened to your unsold cabinet? They've taken it away to put the new glass in, and I'm looking forward to getting it back so I can rearrange all my things in it. The back bedroom was once home to a plethora of disorganised pots. Now... The pottery pandemonium is almost over. All the pots have been sorted and boxed, waiting to be sold or displayed. The rooms are work in progress. 
Why haven't they been sold? Because I've not exhibited them properly. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to arrange for a gallery to put my exhibition on. Great idea. I know, it's a wonderful idea. You're a smart lady. Yes, I am. <laughs> Maggie's dream home gallery is within reach. And outside, her carport come studio was once crammed with more pots and old equipment, but now it's been cleared and has become a potter's haven. Madge has made an excellent effort getting rid of mountains of pots and clothing. And minus selling fees, Curtis has made Madge some money from a selection of her unused possessions. When Curtis took your items away yes. to get them sold, yeah. do you think he made any money? No, I don't think so. Has he? Yes. He has? £655. You are lying. No, I'm not. What? £655. <laughs> he did not! He did! Maggie's home is not only starting to look dramatically different, she's got a brilliant cash for clutter total. What are you going to do with the money? Well, I did, I did promise Sally that yes. I'd take her somewhere. Maybe let Sally choose the exotic destination. A day trip to Skagness. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I'm so pleased to see the difference in Madge's house. They might only be small changes, but to Madge, they make a real difference. She's happy, I'm happy, a job well done. <laughs>